Online Services, the Marley and Who1.co.uk present the 20 Megabyte Doctor Who Podcast. Hello and welcome to the 20 Megabyte Doctor Who Podcast episode 527. I'm Adam and it's too late. I'm regenerating. And here's Ben Shoveler. No broken bones, slight loss of dignity, no change there then. And Mary Lang. Are you telling me that bees are aliens? <laughs> so yes, it's just us three for, for one night only. We have the professionals on the show. Da, 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 da. Shouldn't that be more like... <laughs> what the hell? Why would it be that? Unless it's a pride march. We're not doing a pride march this week. Right then, so this week we're going to be looking at the stolen earth. Everybody is so agreeable that we did one episode at a time between the stolen earth and Journey's End um, that they couldn't be bothered to be on the show this week. So that was well, great. Well, I, I find that quite astonishing considering, mm. you know, what an episode it is as well. I mean, yeah. if you're going to miss one, you don't want to be missing this one, surely. Correct. Well, maybe not, but they did. Uh, well, Jerry's... more fool them, Adam. More fool them. Absolutely. So, with, with no interruptions, we should get Master. through this quite Master. nicely. <laughs> <laughs> um, right then, so uh, I'm just trying to find my uh, priority jingles folder, because I got so excited that Ben was on the toilet listening to, and oh, sorry, watching us, or watching me earlier on, that uh, it was. what I was doing yeah. for a few moments there. Um, okay, the episode begins, this is stolen there. Which, the, thank you. The Doctor and Donna running out of the TARDIS in a, back to a, a standard suburban street because, obviously, previous episode, Bad Wolf is everywhere and he thought that it was the end of the world, universe or whatever. So they run back to Earth and find that everything appears, for a few seconds at least, to be OK. Uh, and just as they go back into the TARDIS, um, everything outside disappears and all we've got is a few rocks and lots of space. What on earth is going on? Are you making a cup of tea? Sorry, I was just moving my, my, my wires around a little bit to make it more comfortable for me. Couldn't you have done that before we started recording? I was on the toilet. <laughs> Evidently so. And, and before that, I was in my car driving my daughter home. So, you know, I kind of did did rush in. I may not have finished, Adam. I may have come <sighs> in a little bit early. <sighs> right. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, while um, all this happened, the doctor sort of got this sort of rather scared, sort of shocked face going on. Uh, realising that the earth has disappeared we have a flash of Martha Jones uh, with a Hitler hairdo flat on the ground um, after having just sort of woken up after a, a, a bit of a what looks like some sort of explosion at uh, Unit HQ uh, and then we have uh, Dempsey, well not yet sorry I haven't seen Dempsey yet, meanwhile at Torchwood HQ in Cardiff Captain Jack digs himself out from under a uh, office furniture Bye. item uh, and goes oh, right. to see poor old Yanto with his sore head and um, uh, Gwen with her sort of uh, typical 80s. Well, sorry, not 80s. It was an 80s, was it? It was, it was a noughties, naughty straightened hairdo. Uh, yeah. And they very quickly uh, assess the situation using their fancy torchwood kit. Uh, and then we move on to uh, Bannerman Road, where Sarah Jane is being a little bit over attentive to her adoptive son, um, making sure he's OK. And... Um, Mr. Smith, the computer, then comes out of the wall with a, the fanfare that on this occasion Sarah Jane decides to take the Mickey out of. Uh, and each of them. Don't sorry. you wonder if her son knows? He says, oh, it feels like, you know, like a temporal. Yeah, but is that, he is that way. Space but, shift, and you wonder where yeah. has he been that he would recognize He's what that a space like. boy. Uh, but he does that throughout the whole of uh, Sarah Jane Adventures, but because he's um, not of this world. So. Uh, yeah, so they all assess individually um, what's going on. Uh, while um, Wilf and Donna's mum come out into the street, look up into the sky. Everybody else looks up into the sky because we don't see it yet, including I the milkman, who I forgot to mention at the beginning of the episode. Um, and then <laughs> there's a flash, and, and Don, sorry, Rose appears, legs akimbo, holding this humongous gun, and um, smoulders a little bit to the camera, looks up, and then we see the the planets in the sky so five minutes in before we actually get into the proper episode after the title sequence um 
And of course, the Doctor thinks that that's it for, for the Earth and uh, scares Donna Whitless um, after, you know, more or less. I think her name. That, I think her name was Donna Noble. Oh, was not it Donna sorry. Whitless? Let me some, see some news flashes, including the standard American u- news lady name of which I forget. Uh, but somebody seems to know it, but I don't remember it ever being actually shown on on Doctor Who. Um, yeah. yeah, they didn't. They never show her name, but yeah. I guess they assume everybody she has knows got a character name. Yeah. Um, and then there's somebody, some scientific bloke talking about um, why they know that the Earth has moved. Constellations have changed. Uh, we have Paul O'Grady with his now deceased dog. Um, I don't think these programmes would actually be on TV if, if the Earth had been uh, moved to, to a different constellation. But oh yeah, it's a science fiction fantasy TV show with a little bit of comedy. Um, meanwhile, back at Torchwood, um, we obviously the the bit with Paul O'Grady. It's what Yanto's watching, and he finds it very funny. Probably a little mm-hmm. bit too funny. And while they're all sort of. Um, faffing around i think we get the sort of hint that daleks are on the way there's a bit of looting going on um while the looting's going on rose sort of walks through the streets and finds uh, a shop called rather appropriately megabyte world <laughs> something like that <laughs> um and, and you have to wonder why with, with the earth you know in emergency does she walk into one shop and threaten the looters <laughs> it's like yeah. i think bigger yeah. things going on than yeah. stopping the guys well, not for Rose. I mean, she was she was like crack hard on not letting people steal stuff. Mm. Yeah, and, and, and then then you know every time someone stole stuff, her accent changed. Yes. She got... <laughs> yeah. Well, she did um, scare, but she was really tough to those nippers that were looting in that little uh, mo- um, megabyte shop, uh, and scared them off with her big gun. Uh, Wilf is really worried about Donna. Uh, Captain Jack's really worried about uh, Martha because Martha, uh, you know, is. Especially when the Daleks um, start appearing, or they'll start, you'll get a bit teary eyed when the Daleks turn up, and there's lots of cuddling and kissing going on. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And um, then uh, make sorry Dempsey um, decides that he's going to send Martha on on a mission with this sort of untested transmat thing that they nicked off the Sontarans, and the Daleks invade the Doctor and. Um, Donna, because obviously Earth's been moved to a different constellation, go to the the um, what's that thing called? They go to oh god the the, the Medusa Cascade. No, no, the, no, um, no, it's the other one. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the the um, the shadow block proclamation. That's the one. The shadow sh- shadow block proclamation. The shadow block the papa. Is that basically what Cliff Richard said when he said he was going to join the band? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, oh, that's the on. shadows proclamation. I do appreciate. <laughs> Um, I've got your timing (laughs) (laughs) and then um, I thought it was Tilda Swinton but it's some some woman with a a blonde sort of curly wig uh, who's in charge of the shadow proclamation got red eyes as well Um, obviously been up too long she had Uh, a really heavy night the night before yeah Um, and yeah so they assess the situation what's going on with the, the, the power 27 planets is it or something like that um, lots of people get done in by the Daleks. I say even um, make sorry Dempsey make piece was a blonde one, wasn't it? Even Dempsey gets uh, annihilated. And then we see uh, there's a few sort of hints of the the Emperor Dalek, and then of course a little Davros's hand, and of course Dalek Khan being a little bit bonkers, uh, who seems to know what's happening in the universe because he he managed to. Um, what they call it, emergency uh, temporal shift into the Imagine time war, which apparently the time what, war's locked, etc., etc. Sorry, I've probably ben? got an effect I can do to make me sound like Dalek Khan. Nah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what happens next? Oh, yeah, so, of course, Donna's blubbing because um, she thinks she's lost her family and stuff. Imagine uh, the temporal shift. Nearly, probably a little bit higher. Higher pitch, it's a little, I think. A little bit long on the uh, on the reverb, actually. Um, yeah, okay, never mind. No, that's before he went mad. He went mad after the emergency temporal shift. That's true. He did, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, well, I'll see if I can find something for later. Yes. Uh, anyway, so the doctor decides that he's going to go off and, and and fight them, but is told by the woman from the Shadow Proclamation he absolutely cannot. But he does it anyway. Uh, the dad. You're not going. All right. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> 
So the Daleks start rounding people up in my mate Ian's uh, road, uh, it's Penarth uh, High Street, which is where he lives, and um, Will thinks he can um, do them by shooting paint at the eye stalk, which just dissolves when that happens. And just about, they're going to just about to get done, and right behind the Dalek, unbeknownst to him, Rose blasts it to smithereens with her big gun. Do you think he got the idea of that from um, Dalek Invasion of Earth 2060? Or whatever it's called, 20, uh, the, 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 the movie that Peter Cushing yes. did where, they, where he, what he was in. Possibly. Mm-hmm. Possibly, yes. I just realised the battery of my camera is running out. Where's my... Charge it quickly. I thought I'd put a new one on there. Where the hell's my battery? Here's one. Right, so that means I'm going to lose the picture for a sec. This is good, isn't it? Going podcasting. Uh, yes, Rick Rastedly. Right. All right, let's put that battery in and hope that it comes back fairly quick. Oh, nice noise. That's the mm-hmm. camera coming on. Oh, I'm back. That, that was quick. Yeah. Right, sorry, I'm I was got sidetracked. Anyway, so Wilf um, is sort of... Um, Oh, yeah, Don, I'm sorry, Rose goes to visit Wilf and uh, Donna's mum because she's saved their lives. The Doctor sort of uh, can't find the 27 planets and starts sulking, uh, I think scaring Donna again. And um, all the um, the various Doctor Who spin-offs start sort of cuddling each other and sitting and waiting. And meanwhile, um, Harriet Jones, do. former Prime Minister... <laughs> doesn't everybody love her <laughs> appears uh, in, the, in the guise of the wonderful Penelope, Penelope Wilton who's in another yes, one of my favourites yes we favorites. know another yeah, one of my favourite series uh, Afterlife uh, which is oh uh, yes yes oh yeah she's series. brilliant in that and um, that's right yeah because then they all start, they do a little Skype link don't they where um Rose gets to see all the other incumbents, but they can't see her because uh, Wilf has got an out-of-date uh, computer system that doesn't have a <laughs> webcam because it's a bit <laughs> naughty. Apparently. Get the camera, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, they Captain can't Jack. me. They can't see me. <laughs> Captain yeah. Jack decides to flirt with everybody available, and Martha does not die from this transpat. She la- lands at her mum's house, and uh, so they all essentially the one place. The- the one place in the world it knew I wanted to be was back home with you, man. No, I think she wanted to be with the doctor, so it really did get that bit wrong, didn't it? Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> not at this point she didn't. She was well over him by now. <laughs> yeah. So um, they all sort of hatch a plan. That they're going to all ring the doctor at the same time. Um, and there's a, there's a number that everybody dials and this torture would sort of feed this power into this circular, this thing that creates circles and pumps them into space. And um, <laughs> the circle pump, yeah, the circle pump, yeah. Um, they got a lot of those in Wales, apparently. Um, yeah, an overstocking of them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then the message gets through, and revealing all the. Um, Hold all on, the you planet. missed the bit where Rose oh. goes, "Find me, Doctor. Find, Find me, Doctor. Doctor." Yeah, she did say that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But they all think they're going to die because the Daleks come, because the Daleks do actually um, end up exterminating um, lots um, of Harriet people. Jones, uh, former Prime Minister. Uh, yes, then, we course, do we? <laughs> yes, we know. Do we? Yes, we know. Yes, even the Daleks say, don't they? We know who you are. Um, and then, of course, <laughs> Davros introduces himself to everybody, and um, Sarah Jane goes, oh, how, how could you survive? Blah, 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 blah. Because um, you died. But, yeah, but he's been alive. He was alive a few more times after Sarah originally left Doctor Who. She, she obviously hadn't been watching the TV series. No, I would say he needs to have a few burgers. So he reveal, reveals his boobies to everybody. He lifts this little shirt up. He sees he's certainly a bit skin and bony, so he'd be a couple of burgers maybe to help him out. And um, the Daleks start sort of invading various areas that we know very well. Uh, Captain Jack has got the coordinates he needs to find uh, the Doctor. And, well, it's, uh, to make, it's to make his... Um, make his... Uh, trans, uh, his uh, jumpy thing work isn't it because yes the doctor made yeah, it stop working he, he and then did. he didn't he didn't need he needed the two oscillating numbers which yes. was a, a nine and four and eight and four which fixes his little wrist gadget yes and, and off then he, he goes can... leaving his friends to essentially get done in by the exactly. dalek they, they don't have very good weaponry <laughs> no. 
Uh, no, so Rose... they didn't, but I, I, I need to point out at what? this point that Eve Miles had an absolutely cracking top on. Yeah. Uh, so Rose um, then um, just leaves Wilf and uh, Donna's mum to, to go and find the doctor. And then Sarah leaves her son uh, to die at almost certain death and goes out to try and find the doctor. And in my <laughs> mate Ian Street, the doctor and Donna arrive in the TARDIS and the, um, the doctor says, where's Rose? Why don't you ask her yourself, etc. Looks over his shoulder, and there's a big passionate run towards each other. Oh, don't uh, one downplay One of the best that. scenes ever. The Dalek, the best Dalek. So this Dalek actually manages to shoot the Doctor and nearly kill him. Well, no, kill he, him. he only half shoots him. Well, he, he got him, didn't he? He's never been shot by a, doc, a Dalek yeah, before but, or since. But only, only half of the Doctor went all Dalek-y zapped. That's, is that why he only did half the regeneration? I think so. Oh, okay. Anyway, so he gets um, shot and they carry him into the TARDIS and uh, to cut a long story short, while everybody's just about to die, he regenerate. He starts regenerating, I beg your pardon, because everybody's just about to die, aren't they? So it's a really very exciting ending. And, and then the uh, title's wrong. And that's it. That is... And it, and it's and the we, bear in mind, we've watched, we've watched oh, all the episodes oh, of Doctor fantastic. Who from start to finish at this point. That is the best cliffhanger ever, and it still ever. is. Ever. It is. Ever. Without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Without... <laughs> yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. Because we really didn't know what was what was no, going to happen. We no. thought we'd been told we were going to have the new Doctor. We knew Tenor was leaving. And I was convinced well, everybody was actually coming up who was going to be the new Doctor. Because they were convinced that was the end of um, David Tennant's time in Doctor Who. Brilliant. And that's what made it so good, is the yeah. fact that there wasn't a media leak or anything. Nobody knew that was the cliffhanger. No one knew he was going to regenerate no. back into himself either. It was no. absolute genius. Oh, but the back into self bit is obviously next week. Or not next week, week after, because it's Easter Sunday next week, and I've been um, given the um, the grand you're not allowed to do it speech by uh, by Deb. So, um, <laughs> what, have uh, you got a lot, too much chocolate to eat or something? I hope so. Um, I, I've got uh, my own chocolate without uh, worrying about the possibility of getting Easter eggs or not. So, yes, uh, Tim Drury, uh, last I get to play this jingle. Tim Drury. Says, busy watching Picard, but good to see you back. Uh, thank you very much, Tim. I'm looking forward to watching Picard as well. I haven't seen episode two yet. Ian Kirk says, Rose used to work in a shop, so perhaps that's why she is hard on looters. Oh, maybe. Yeah, because it just seemed really weird that she was suddenly yes. turned in the middle of chaos. To... Yes. <laughs> Alan T. Butcher says... Is that how she was... dealt with it, though, when she worked in the department store? Was by getting out a big, like, bazooka-type thing and just, like, scaring people? <laughs> I mean, that's that's proper... That doesn't happen when I go to Morrison's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, oh, yeah, there's another one, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. Alan T. Butcher says it was a full regeneration. Yes, it was a full regeneration. I agree with you, Alan, but he sort of... He funneled off, or sort of siphoned off the second half of the regeneration. So, therefore, hand. it wasn't so a full it, regeneration. Yeah. Yeah. So, so am I right, Ben? He didn't completely. No. What do you mean, yeah, no? Hang on. I was thinking you know, that. Was yes. Me and Mary agree with each other yet yeah. again. It's what? more of a pseudo regeneration. Yeah, well, it's, it's a half regeneration because the other half it's created the, the, the Dr. Donna thingy. Right, so therefore it's not a full regeneration if it's yeah. only a half regeneration. Yeah, so I'm going to go with it was a half regeneration. And I'm going to say it's a pseudo regeneration. Oh. And I'm going to say it's a full <laughs> regeneration. That's too posh a word, pseudo. Uh, sounds like some Japanese martial art. Them, right. right then. So I'm just going to say what I think about uh, this particular story. Absolute brilliance. And it's lovely to see. And the only one we really see all the, the offshoot people together. Uh, and they also uh, having Yanto in Doctor Who is fab, especially as if uh, Gareth David Lloyd can come to, to Fantasy Con like he should have done originally. Um, so... Um, all in Was all, uh, absolutely adore watching this story because it's such fun. What did you think of it, Ben? Yeah, it is absolutely such fun. Um, it brought, uh, brought up a whole range of emotions in me watching this episode because, as we often mention, this is the golden period of Doctor Who and this is probably the best... It, it, this is as good as it gets. It, as, as That's what I was thinking as I was sat there watching this episode a couple of weeks back this is as good as it gets it doesn't get any better it never got any better than that and so to watch it again it just brings massive smiles to my face and tears to my eyes when things happen because it was so good and that's why 
I suggested that we did it in the two parts because there's so much in this part the the, the, the coming together of all the uh, spin-off assistants which yeah. is it's so simple but so genius to have them all at you know in the same story and then all finally meeting up and everyone touching base with each other uh, as we've touched on as well the the um, regeneration at the end was just absolutely out of the blue mind blowing tastic for a whole week I remember the whole country who was bothered about Doctor Who <laughs> was, you know, that it was the only thing they were talking about. What, what is he regenerating? Is it is it going to someone else? Is another actor coming in? How is how is he going to get out of this? How are they not going to get a new actor? He's regenerating. Of course he's going to leave. That's it. That's it. He's done. <laughs> yeah. But no, you know, uh, RTD found out a rather interesting way to to keep him on, which no one had ever thought of. And the, the first episode of this series finale was just genius it's absolutely brilliant and uh i can't wait for next week's because that's what do you mean the week after next or even the week oh. after week after next depending on what i'm doing on the sunday because i've lost track of what i'm doing at the moment i can't wait for the next time we record a podcast <laughs> for the next episode because it is just oh it's just absolute bonzer isn't it just absolute brilliant stuff it doesn't get better than that mary oh hang on are you done? Yes, that's why I said Mary. Well, I've got to play the tune. What do you think about it then, Mary? Well, I have to, unfortunately, um, <laughs> well, although I mean, I didn't see this at the time yeah. of its, you know, broadcast. So all all that it led up to, all that excitement and and wondering and mystery and what's going to happen i never got to experience that so you have memories that i don't because when i did see this it was part of watching the whole season so mm. i was move right on to the next episode so 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 i feel sad that that i was robbed of you know all <laughs> of that anticipation and uh you know all that fuss and bother but i do have to agree that it is an extravaganza i mean <laughs> it, it's action packed and it's emotional. Uh, it's full of <laughs> references. You know, there's so many references back to previous stories, even, you know, old who stories. Um, and, and Davies gets to feature all of his creations, all of his people, you know, all the shows that he's been writing for. Just in case, you know, one of them made you curious, you might want to go check it out. Um, so there's a lot of self serving <laughs> thing going on there. But, you know, yeah, it, it is sort of a very exciting story. But, oh, my gosh, it is so full of contradictions and things that are making me go, what? Like, you know, <laughs> how does he know, you know, what it feels like to go through a time space transference? <laughs> um, and then when they when it I think it was the doctor who, who when someone questions uh, Donna, you know, like, well, how can we breathe and all that if the planets moved? And he says, um, you know, well, the air and the gravity have been maintained. Um, whoever it is wants the people alive. Well, then it's the Daleks. They don't want the people alive. They show up and they start exterminating everybody. <laughs> well, that's why they <laughs> wanted the people alive. Yourself, so yeah. exterminate them. <laughs> is, is, is it for sport? I mean, do the yeah. Daleks get into killing for sport? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> they they score themselves for where they shoot where they manage to shoot the uh the, the poor exterminated person and the brighter the flash the more points they get <laughs> yeah but i mean but that that was like the super contradiction why save everybody and then move in and kill everybody um but it, and the thing is full of that uh you know those kind of contradictions here and there that that kept making me like what what um, you know, and I, I did see it a long time ago, and I do remember being a little puzzled, you know, at the time. Um, and now this time I really, you know, kind of zeroed in to see, you know, how spectacular is this? Well, it is spectacular, but it's so full of buzz and contradictions that, you know, that and because I don't have that experience that you talk about, Ben, about, you know, how exciting it was to wait for the next episode. Um, I'm afraid I'm only looking at it, you know, like from 50 miles up and, you know, I can't get into the, the emotional part of it, except that I do think the Davies era was one of the best. Um, and early Moffat is good, but Davies era was great. And this time with uh, Peter, um, I mean, David Tennant is, uh, is, is 
one of the best. So that's where I am. Kind well, of no, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Um, we also have um, Terry Miles saying spoilers. Uh, Alan T. Butcher saying it counted as one of his 12 regenerations. We didn't say it wasn't a regeneration. What we're saying is that, yes, he, it was a regeneration. He used all his regeneration energy up, so therefore it was a physically a regeneration for him. But it was a half regeneration for the 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 physical aspect of the Tenth Doctor because he siphoned the, his stuff, the other half of it, off into a hand. You didn't say so, it was half regeneration because yeah. they don't... They don't do half regenerations. That's why I'm saying it's a yeah. pseudo. Well, for the tenth incarnation, it's a half regeneration because he didn't change his persona. Mm-hmm. It didn't really happen. No. Well, it did. He regenerated, but he didn't change his physical appearance. Um, anyway, enough of that. Uh, Alancy Butcher says at a, at the time. Yes. So this is yes. So I'm getting dings coming up. I don't quite yeah, know why. Yeah, dings because it's it's Kirby sending things through. I was oh, getting great. dings as well. Yeah. Uh, anyway, where to go? So, so, um, so that moves us on to the next part of the proceedings, which I've just realised is Kirby's bit. So we can't do the feed, the feedback because only Kirby is allowed to do that, eh? Well, of well, course not. Uh, <laughs> that, that's, that, that's, I think we should stop the podcast now. Yeah. <laughs> really? I think we've done what we can do. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do it. Then I've got this pressure. Kirby's feedback section. Andy Nunny. Andy Nunny says, did two recordings last week, Kirby. Okay. Uh, Neil James says, hi, everyone. My catch-up continues. The Doctor's daughter, I really like Jenny, and this story does have a few decent moments, but ultimately I find it a bit of a bore. The weakest point of of a strong series. Two stars. And then the oh. unicorn and the wasp. What a cast. That's me saying that, not him. Um, I love Agatha Christie and 1920s set murder mysteries so naturally. I find, I'm reading this really weirdly, I find this story enormous fun. Gorgeous cast and even the whole wasp thing is a bit stupid. I love this one. Four stars. Then Silence in the Library, Forest of the Dead. I always enjoy this story, but I don't see it in... Uh, it's the masterpiece a lot of fans do Catherine Tate is outstanding and the moments of horror really land well but it's the overcomplicated and tries too hard at times plus I find River Song hugely annoying Midnight oh hold on a minute what <laughs> hold on can you just read that last bit again and I'm right on it oh god okay plus I find River Song hugely annoying there you go Midnight gets better with every watch. Sky's incredible, amazing episode. By the way, it's got an E on the end of it, uh, Sky. Uh, Neil, it's a S-K-Y-E. I may be wrong. Uh, not Sky's not a, a neighbourhood. <laughs> Turn left. Epic episode. Pretty depressing, but really well done. Donna is better than Rose. I enjoy that massive beetle. Four stars. Then... Stolen Which one, Earth. Paul McCartney or uh, John Lennon? <laughs> Soul on Earth. It, this really feels like Russell T. Davis's greatest hits. It's a big... It's loud... And the gang's all here. Well, almost. Jackie and Mickey. Meet are the gang, because the boys are here. Yeah. The boys to entertain <laughs> you. Um, great to see Davros again. And it's a tremendous <laughs> performance from Julian Bleach. What are you laughing at now? <laughs> the way he said, nice to see Davros again. <laughs> like nice to him, see you. It's like great you met to him see for you. coffee last Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nice to uh, see Davros again. We had a good catch-up. Yeah. Right. His, his left hand's almost grown back. Yeah. <laughs> a few things and he that decided I... not to oh, destroy sorry. the earth for 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Whilst he was eating a chocolate muffin, bizarrely. But anyway, I'll see him again next week. Make sure he's all right. <laughs> a few things I really enjoyed. Jack's excitement that he's about to witness a regeneration. Sarah's horror at recognising Davros from way back in in Genesis is quite funny. He, talk, he talks about Jack's excitement about about to re, witness regeneration. If you remember the, the bit we're going to see next is when he he doesn't regenerate properly and he looks really disappointed. But anyway, um, <laughs> the insane Dalek Khan who is certainly off his meds and just how cool, sexy, and badass is Gwen Cooper? Or the See, I said that. I said that. That red top really yeah. does her justice. <laughs> when this aired, I remember being bowled over by the cliffhanger. I couldn't believe my favourite series actually had the balls to kill off the Tenth Doctor halfway through a season finale, and in such a cruel way, denying him his reunion 
with Rose after so long. Astonishing stuff. I was proud to be a fan. To be continued. Four out of five. Brandon Moore. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <clears throat> right. I should be having some water here to prepare my throat for this, this, this epic. Okay. Oh, how... how sorry, I'll start again. Oh, you know nothing of any human and that it, that will be your downfall. The Stolen uh, Earth by Russell T. Davies. Davies, spelt D-A-Y-V-I-Z. Yeah. A good decision to review this one in two parts, as there's a lot going on here. On first broadcast, I missed the episode, which was a great shame. I'd been whisked away to something or other. I don't remember what exactly, but I missed it. I watched the episode the next morning and had been spoiled that there was a regeneration. However, the shock of the episode ending mid-transformation was still effective anyway. The universe crossover of this story is what is so exciting. It, and such a shame that nothing like this has happened again since. Well, it'd be a bit of a copycat if it did, wouldn't it? Where have all the spin-offs gone? Hmm. In just four years, RTD has managed to achieve the same effect that Marvel took 12 years to build towards in Endgame. So very mm. well done. The pre-title sequence is brilliantly exciting. The Doctor and Donna spend most of the episode trying to get involved with the plot, and I would say it is the weakest of the story threads. RTD's original story plans included a much gender grander, sorry, grander scale of the Shadow Proclamation, featuring every monster ever... And it's a shame that this was not pulled off on screen. Putting this aside, Ten and Tate are so good together that I could watch them doing anything. Rose is better here than in turn left. And she bounces well against Sylvia and Wilf, who gets all the best lines in the episode. Uh, mm -hmm. The paintball scene in particular is great. Can I, I'm just going to divert uh, to the subject of Rose. Now, Rose is mostly in all the episodes we've seen a sort of not quite Rose Rose. She's sort of different. She's not quite herself for me. And then she becomes herself when the Doctor is dying. She suddenly becomes Rose again. I don't know how long, I can't remember how long that lasts for, but that's the Rose I remember, her being all emotional and in sort of in love with the Doctor, not being all badass and carrying big guns, but and, and you know, sort of being in control of the alternative universe unit and stuff like that. Anyway. Team wait, wait, Torchwood. Are... Before we get off Rose, that was one of the contradictions that struck me too. Yeah. Is when Rose shows you turn left, she's all badass and I know the future and you know this terrible thing is going to happen. And then in this episode, she's almost pathetically stupid about everything, mm -hmm. um, except his regeneration. You know, but <laughs> and yeah. I thought, where did she suddenly lose everything that she knew? Yeah. Team Tortured are good in this episode. Someone should let Ben know that Eve Miles is in this. Eve Miles is hot, by the way. Uh, I hope your wife didn't see you write, um, write that particular line. Anyway, um, Daleks invade yes. the, invading yes. the hub. So cool. The only thing that could have made this, excuse me, that could have made this better is Reese driving a truck with them. Why not? Yes, why not indeed? <laughs> Luke and Sarah, sorry, Sarah Jane, hiding it out in the attic is perhaps underwhelming. And would it really have been too difficult to have a short scene with Maria and her dad, who is coming to FantasyCon? Yeah, Maria's dad will be at FantasyCon. That's a good segue, that. Well done, um, uh -huh. uh, Mr. M. Um, Sarah Jane getting to meet Davros again after all these years is a wonderful touch of continuity. Martha, in the New York unit base, adds some scale to the story. And the teleportation device is a neat use of the Sontaran technology. Anjo Andoa, Anjo Ando, isn't it? Yeah, she's in Bridgerton, isn't she? Is wasted with her one line of dialogue, however, yeah. Harriet Jones, yes, we know who you are, assembling the Hoovengers. I thought about the Avengers, actually. The oh, Hoovengers okay. is typically <laughs> iconic. It's a shame that she didn't get to meet with the Doctor, and according to RTD, she survived her extermination via a trapdoor, so <laughs> all is good. <laughs> Um, Daleks are at their most terrifying in this episode with Julian Bleach giving an incredible form of incredible performance as their pet Davros but more on the next episode overall this is a story that is less about plot and more about character so 
it's so well done that even when some elements are flimsy and contrived you cannot help but enjoy yourself watching this as part of the lockdown to sorry the lockdown who tweet alongs two years ago was a real fan experience and it's an episode that can be devoured again and again nine out of ten what a cliffhanger to be continued have to agree with most of what you said there um brandon um Lillian Robin, remember her? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, who's, who's absent today? Yes. Yeah, so well, I'd, I'd love to see. Uh, isn't she going to Galley or something like that? She, I can't remember. She was. Oh, right, Galley is in February. Oh, is, oh, I don't know what she's up to then. Um, Stolen oh, Earth, there. first part of one of RTD's over, overblown season finales, but it just works. One of my fave stories. I remember seeing this the first time and being so shocked at the surprise regeneration. Not much else to say. Superb. Can't watch the live stream today. I'm with friends in Chattanooga today. Yeah. What an excuse. Wow. Oh, really? That deserves a ding. Okay. No, you Did you go to... by Juju? Exactly. <laughs> there, don't you? You can watch. <laughs> wow. I'm impressed with that one. And that's certainly not in uh, Reese Parton's book of excuses. Um, if it is, I'd be very surprised. So that moves us on to the uh, other load of... Um, has a video just come through? Um, from you, Ben. I don't know what's going on there. Um, right. <laughs> I just recorded you. That's a bit worrying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got all these new toys I'm trying out. <laughs> I don't want to know about your toys. La 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 la. Too much information. La 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 la. No, no, no. Um, right, not, I've got not to send the kind of to toys <laughs> Not the toys that normally you, that males buy in the Isle of Wight. All right, thank like you that. very much. That'll do. Mary <laughs> Lang. That's you, isn't it, Mary? Right, let's send this in. I can't see now. My phone's in the way. And, right, I've got something for you now. You're, I'm sending you something to read out from uh, um, from piece, some people that me and Debbie met last yeah. week. I saw the pictures. Some lovely That's people, nice. in fact. I got a cup of tea out of them, at least. Yeah. Wow, nice. Okay. I, all right. This is from uh, Linda and Terry Miles. And they say, first of all, we have to say it was great to see you guys on the South Island it last week. It was great to see you too. <laughs> Sorry we left and took the good weather with us. <laughs> on to Stolen Earth, where the earth gets stolen. I see where they got the title for this one now. Uh, there's a hand in a jar on the floor. I wonder if that will come in useful later on. Richard Dawkins wasn't his third wife, Lala Ward, Tom Baker. Oh, Richard Dawkins wasn't his third wife, Lala Ward, Tom Baker's ex-wife. I think they're right. Um, good God, RTD has thrown all of his toys into this one. <laughs> sure For the return of several companions. There's Sarah Jane Smith, Martha Jones, Jack Harkness, Harriet Jones, and even Rose Tyler again. <laughs> there are also young Yanto Jones and Gwen Cooper from Torchwood, and even Mr. Smith and Luke Smith from the Sarah Jane Adventures. Well, you have to advertise the spin-off series, especially if you write them. <laughs> Isn't General Shen... Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't General Sanchez the chap who was called Dempsey from the 1980s? <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> hold up the Daleks are in this one that's not right they're not mentioned in the title surely it should be the Daleks steal the earth oh that's nice the supreme pepper pot he looks so butch with the big metal neck braces holding his head on yes the shadow proclamation so they do exist Dev Ross is back he last appeared in the 1988 story remembrance of the Daleks Dalek Khan survived after an emergency transfer in Evolution of the Daleks and is revealed to be alive and well-ish. Okay, he's totally gaga. Harriet ah. Jones, former prime minister, says the Mr. Copper Foundation created the subwave. Naughty boy, he promised the doctor he would <laughs> waves. <laughs> oh dear, Harriet Jones, former prime minister, dies and the valiant was also lost. Hang about, I thought it was lots of running down corridors, not running up the road, only to get shot by a sneaky Dalek who was quietly stealing the hubcaps off of a car. The cliffhanger features the doctor starting to regenerate. Oh no, it's not the end of the season yet. He can't change. More to be revealed next week. 
We enjoyed this one with all the old companions. We can't wait for the next exciting episode. Stay safe and well, everybody. Linda and Terry Miles. Why, thank you, Linda and Terry Miles. I'm glad you had time to write that while all, all you're travelling around the country and stuff. I will have to say, just to make point, I was about Dempsey. Um, there was Michael Brandon who played Dempsey and the um, American unit bloke. Now, when I was in my early 20s, he was the bloke I was most jealous of because he's married to, uh, what was her name again? Um, I can't remember her name. I'll have to look it up now. Who's that? What? Um, um, what? Michael Brandon. He was married to... Michael Brandon was Dempsey. married to... Uh, Glynis... What was her name? Glynis Barber. Barber. She was, without any question of doubt, the sexiest woman on TV to me as, as a, in my early 20s. And I was desperately jealous of Michael Brandon. <laughs> Just so I agree. I agree. She definitely was the sexiest woman on telly in 1983 for about 15 minutes. Well, it wasn't 1983. It was oh, 1986, it was. I believe. No, Dempsey 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 was it? Yes, I, I know. It was about. I, I'd finished my milk round at that point, and I, I was uh, in between jobs and watching Dempsey make peace on Saturday. Evening. I thought you. I thought you meant you finished your oh, milk round by 5:30 God, on Saturday night. She was so beautiful. <laughs> Oh, I need, I need to sort of uh, calm down a bit, so I think a good way to calm down is to have a bit of Andy Nunny. Oh, yeah. Well, good morning, 20 Megan Wright says Andy Nunny. It is Saturday, April the 2nd. Um, I did a load of ironing yesterday because we got visitors down to the on a Friday. Did load two hours worth, watched two episodes, and then found out from Kirby that uh, not only you're not recording tomorrow, but you're doing the two-parter in two parts, which wasn't how you did it before. And I'm being lectured by Kirby. We've told you that we always do total stories together. And now you're not. I don't know. I mean, uh, these changes are playing hell with my domestic routines. I mean, could you have some consideration, please, folks? Anyway, rant over. Um, so... I'll do it in two bits. First of all, we have Stolen Earth. Now, opening credits must be the longest one ever with a number of names coming up. You know, David Tennant, Catherine Tate, Freem Rajaman, uh, Elizabeth Sladen, John Barrowman, uh, Donna, not Donna Noble, I've got the wrong one, but you know what I mean. And then then afterwards, we had, there was Eve Miles and um, I can never remember the character who plays Yanto, though I've been to his shrine. Uh, he's, got, he's got three names. Anyway, but uh, and it goes rattling on in and the earth is being taken away and people are panicking and then people looting, which you, you always have. I mean, uh, having worked in Croydon, I think that's just part of the scene. I mean, they filmed in Croydon and then done with a bat in with this. But uh, but you get all the characters, all the companions coming back. I mean, especially anyone one missing would be in uh, River Song. But of course, she's dead. So it would be a bit difficult. Um, but it goes along and they're all trying. They're all slowly coming together, slowly meeting up. The only one who can't is Rose. Uh, we get Wilf being absolutely brilliant as usual. You know, he's concerned about his granddaughter, but, uh, you know, he's not the bumbling old fool that he started off as. You know, he really is a very perceptive, perceptive man and he knows what she's doing, knows what's going on. And uh, when uh, his daughter says, you know, come, oh, no, don't be silly. That's all make believe. You know, she's going around the doctor, going around the galaxy with the doctor. He says, look at the sky, you know, come on. You know, basically, welcome, wake up and smell the coffee. And even by the end of it, she actually knows what's going on. Um, but they all come together slowly. I mean, Harriet Jones comes back. It's funny, I thought she'd already been killed, so I'm, you know, I thought, uh, but obviously not, because well, she's there, but, and then, you, you have to assume that she has been exterminated. They, you, you never actually see it happen, do you? You just see the thing go off, and you have to assume that she's gone. Um, Michael Brandon is the leader of the unit. Again, you never see him killed, do you? Yes, so it's, you know, you were do. they actually killed? Did they escape? Who knows? I mean, I can't remember if you ever do see them again, so you have to assume they are dead. But yeah. the earth's been taken away. People are panicking. Then there's the doctor. Can't get through. We've got all the phones being used. Then you've got this uh, sub ether network. You know, I think it wasn't quite called that, but I, I did think of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy straight away. And they go, they go to Shadow Proclamation. You find out what it's all about. And it's a basic space police. And then they come and... They disappear then, so they, they don't actually really do anything, do they? So useless police force, as you might say, that's uh, <laughs> that like most police forces. Anyway, having been a policeman myself, I can say that they're probably the most effective and work for them now. Anyway, um, I digress. We go across the Matrix, and the Matrix is dead, but you, does, it makes sense later. And, but it sets it all up, because there's a lot of loose strands. Because you've got so many companions, because you've got the, uh, the Mickey captain and... Uh, oh, flipping heck. 
Eve Mars Cow have gone completely blank. They go from one, you've got uh, Rose doing another, you've got Donna and the Doctor doing another one. You've got Wilf and his daughter in the background, almost playing the everyman character, almost like commentating on what's going on. So they, you know, they, I suppose they replaced the viewer as keeping tabs of what's going on. And then Davros appears, and I must admit, when he first comes, that voice just low and slow but it is just so full of menace it's absolutely wonderful i think you know and this is probably the best of davros voice although he does go bonkers later but you know and also in the shadow you, you know you're pretty sure you know who he is but he's in a shadow and his voice is dark and it's it's just so so menacing and so dark and it's really good but so you set up and you get there and there's all these planets there and then the doctor's regenerating and i think everyone's thinking well hang on a minute are they Drops us right to regenerate on us. A great cliffhanger. I mean, you know, I don't think we've ever had a cliffhanger where a regeneration started and not finished before. Um, so there we go. So that was the end of Journey's End. I'm not going to stop this and start again for the second one, which would, of course, be Journey's End. So uh, from your point of view, it'll be a week. From my point of view, it'll be about 30 seconds. Anyway, we'll be seeing you. <laughs> More than a week. Thank you, Andy Nunny. Yeah. All right. So I just got distracted by the golf there because uh, uh, looks like Scheffler's um, lead is not exactly uh, as clear cut as it appeared to be at the beginning of the the day. So it doesn't bother me who wins because I've got money on both of them. Oh, who, who's the other one you got money on then? Smith. I've got money on Smith um, right. and Shuffler, and uh, I'll put a little bit on a little bit too much on well, Tiger Woods. Yeah. He's, uh, he's just played got an little... incredible shot, but I don't think he's going to win somehow. No, because <laughs> he's currently last, so um, <laughs> last. he won't be winning, which is a shame because yeah. I would have had a lovely evening if he had. Yeah. Um, and I also put money on Rory McIlroy, uh, but I've got oh, him each dear. way, and I think he's now he's creeping into the top ten, isn't oh, he? he is? so... oh, I think he's a bit off at the moment. All right, then we got this. <laughs> Hello, Twenty Megabyte Podcast. This is Ian Kirk. Hello, Ian. The Stolen Earth by Russell T Davies. Yes, I'm back. Yes, I'm back. Yes, I'm back. This is the beginning of a two-part story to end the Russell T Davies era. Yes. Like a stage show, everybody takes a bow at the end, including the stars of the spin-offs, the companions and their families. Unit, though none of the familiar members except Martha Jones. Trinity Wells, the American newsreader, is back. And oh, Harriet Jones. I know who she is. Yeah. There is a scene where Rose is walking towards the camera and does not flinch when there is an explosion behind her. Might be a tribute to the Seventh Doctor when the psychic be. circus explodes. Yes. Yeah. The Doctor and Donna visit the, the Shadow Proclamation so we can have a lot of exposition about the clues Russell T Davies has been putting in the scripts. There's a cryptic reference to the planets being rearranged in the pirate planet. The Daleks are the iconic villains of Doctor Who, so they are back again, including Khan! <laughs> Wrong show. At the end, it seems like the BBC have arranged a regeneration without people finding out. Indeed. Or have they? There is the Easter episode next week, so we'll probably review part two after that. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame, isn't it? Well, at least there were no Slovene in this one. Bye for now. Yes, the Easter episode just happens to fall on Easter when I'm not allowed to do the show, but we'll have to talk about it when we're, when I am allowed to do the show, which makes me want to refer to my calendar. Uh, just talk amongst yourselves for a bit. Uh, oh, no, I can do the week after. We're OK. All right. That's a bit of a relief. So, that leaves us one last thing on the feed pack department. What could uh, that be? That would be you, uh, with your brand new theme tune, apparently, uh, for Alan T. Butcher. But, before you start, yeah, what's I haven't been got coming through on the live feed? We've got... got oh, no! OK. <clears throat> We've got Kirby Bartlett Sloan. Sorry, Mary. When you thought you could get away from him, <laughs> He's there in the background all the blooming time. Here he is. I don't have my volume on, but the captions just said you mentioned me. Kirby Butler Sloan, 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 Kirby Butler Sloan. We're interested to see what the, how the the um, auto 
captions say the name Kirby Bartlett Sloan. But Kirby Bartlett Sloan, Kirby Bartlett Sloan, <laughs> Kirby Bartlett Sloan. <laughs> <laughs> um, then he says, you're doing my reading for the feedback, I see. God, it's a commentary on what we've been done. Um, yeah, how are we doing, Kirby? Do tell. You're already <laughs> done discussing the episode. I told you we should have done both episodes today. If you've been on... Oh, yeah, you wouldn't have been able to do them. Actually, we would have gone through both of them quite quickly, wouldn't we, Ben? Anyway, Alan T. Butcher, alternative title, title Larceny of the Daleks. Blast Jerry Miles okay. says she was in Blake 7. Who was? Who was, Who was in Blake 7? Oh, Glynis oh, Barber. Was oh. Yeah, Glyn, I wish she'd been the Doctor's companion at some point. Who was she in Blake 7? A beautiful woman. Yeah, she was. I said she was one of Blake's women, wasn't she, in uh, Blake Seven at some point? Was she? Wow. Okay. Gorgeous. Um, yeah, that's it for the stuff coming through on the live feed. I'm just going to uh, make sure I didn't miss anything. I got distracted by Kirby. Go on then, Ben. <laughs> you can uh, do your new um, butcher bing- jingle and. Uh... I haven't got an Alan T. Butcher jingle. You, oh, I thought you'd you'd spent all week doing jingles for us. Oh yeah, but I haven't done one for Alan T. Butcher. Why not? Well, I don't need to do that. Because, hello, I am Alan T. Butcher. Is that it? I'm so sorry, Alan. Years and years of contributions to the show, and that's what he, he comes up with. Right, yes, um, I've got, I'm have got. i ready for okay. me, um, me cue, uh, and uh, off Fly you go. I'll tell you what, I'll turn my bass down a bit this end, and that should uh, clean the signal up a little bit from Alan's house. Live to Alan's house we've gone. Shall I start? I'm just waiting for the queue to start now. Well, the queue I gave you about five minutes ago. The Rave of Calm, or the full regeneration of the first Tenth Doctor. Now, I've already got problems with this. Because he's been saying it is a full regeneration, so how can you have a first tenth doctor? Because surely after the regeneration, he becomes the eleventh doctor. Yeah, I agree. But it's a tenth incarnation. <sighs> Dear 20 megabytes. It's pseudo and not real. <laughs> the Stolen Earth is, of course, a closely studied survey of loss and reuniting, culminating in the locus of reuniting with apparent loss between the Doctor and Rose. Is this a, is this a smash advert or something? For <laughs> mash, get smash. Oh, you're so rude. <laughs> Anyway, where was I? <laughs> Hold on, I've gone too far now. It sounds like bloody to... Frank Bruno now. He's going to be very, very upset. He's trying to read this, Harry. Isn't he? he's, he's, he's not going to be very pleased. This is outdoing his words. Yes, well, well, you know, I, I think it was doing him justice personally. But, uh... <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, anyway, uh, culminating the locus of reuniting with apparent loss between the Doctor and Rose, echoing Rose's previous loss of her original Doctor after she had come to the acceptance of a new phase with a Doctor, well, sorry, with a different Doctor, and then had a further loss by the continuing dislocated from each other, or other rather than by either of their cessations <laughs> as individuals. You can take a breath now. Just (laughs) fluidly off your tongue, isn't it? Mm. Well, it's easy to say words like that when you're a (laughs) The welter of other companions congregates and incongregates. The companions, I'll tell you what, I'm going to read it off my phone instead of reading it off the computer (laughs) because it's a bit far away. Hold on, I just need to get my glasses. (laughs) (laughs) That's better. Right, then, where are we? Are we there? The welter of other companions, enemies, and homeworlds contextualise this central theme and lead on to the denouement to come. It should be noted that whilst some of... That was the best timing ever, and I talked all over it. (laughs) I'm deeply, deeply sorry. (laughs) It should be noted that some might say 
that moving the Earth from its orbit would have a cataclysmic effect which would disrupt all life on Earth to the extent of an inevitable extinction. In fact, Doctor Who is... Kirby? A science fiction fantasy TV show. I think you'll find it goes <laughs> science fiction fantasy TV show. <laughs> Knows nothing. Uh, it's a science fiction feature feed TV show in which such details can be ironed out by assumed technology fixes off screen. We also learn that Davros did in fact survive the destruction wrought by the Seventh Doctor after he had finally gone too far and had demanded a bottomless bowl of rice pudding. <laughs> but obviously, Scaro was definitely destroyed. Right? We won't be seeing Scarrow again. <laughs> all in all, the stolen Earth is a bold middle part of a bold overall finale to this series. The multiverse threatening narrative is the result of rampant and continual catastrophe. Catastrophe? Catastrophe. <laughs> Catastrophe isn't even a word I've <laughs> tried to say it three times. <laughs> uh, rampant and continuing catastrophe. Catos- <laughs> Alan's going to stop sending his stuff in. If uh... <laughs> That would be really, really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Catastrophe. <laughs> Catastrophe. <laughs> It doesn't even exist. Uh, and... <laughs> Sorry, Arthur. I appear to have what is known in the business known as lost it. <laughs> anyway, this voice isn't helping me either. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've now got so many tears in my eyes I can barely read the screen. <laughs> anyway catastrophe and continual catastrophe in f- I can't see the screen my eyes are too wet <laughs> catastrophe inflation during the last few years and although the quality of the show is still holding up well through this it cannot go on for much longer having reached a threat to all reality it is way beyond the universe threat which was once a special reserve for the end of an epoch of the show, such as the climax of the fourth Doctor. All that said, it would be churlish and difficult not to enjoy the elements here, with the freshness of the return to Daleks carrying their own story accomplished, we can deserve and savour the return of Davros. Julian Bleach makes an outstanding debut joining the Panther of Davros in style. <laughs> Rose's return adds the credibility of the large-scale threat to reality. The story is perhaps two episodes too short, as it clearly needs an episode either side to set up and finish the story it is a part of. Next up. Next up. He always does a next up. Doctor Who and the Emperor of the Void. Or that power would set me up among the gods of nothing. Those are my thoughts. Alan T. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, Alan T. Butcher. Alan T. Butcher says. In Hello. his normal voice, Dennis Barber <laughs> was pretty fetching on TV uh, from uh, from uh, 1978 uh, as a I mutoid think... in Blake Seven. I think you'll find that was his normal voice. Well, you will have. Well, I met him a couple of times. Don't remember him talking like that. But maybe a, <laughs> a, maybe a lozenge is, is required to restore his normal dulcet I, I must tones. have met him on the day he had a very sore throat. Maybe so. Okay, I don't think anything else has come through on the. Uh, feedback oh. front oh. so that means that we can now um are we playing it now then yeah we we, we can we play, can now. Now play just, whatever just the old quizzy title thing is i'll play <coughs> the opening bit now i, I demand <laughs> hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on, hold on. i don't need any assistance from you whatsoever young man 
in this. <laughs> what? That that isn't the theme tune. This <laughs> is the theme tune. And now, live from the Indie Rock Disco Radio Studio One, the game show nobody's talking about. This <laughs> is How Aged Are They? How Aged Are They? How Aged Are They? It's like having How Dennis Waterman on they? the show. That's what the game's about. Shush. How Aged Are They? How Aged Are They? How Aged Are They? Get ready to find out. And your host, Ben Shabba. <laughs> <laughs> hello, 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 and welcome to How Aged Are They? A Doctor Who actor who's recently had a birthday aged guessing quiz, currently featuring on the 20 megabyte Doctor Who podcast. What oh, has this right. podcast become? <laughs> Thank you. The rules are simple. There are four rounds, and in every round I'll give you one actor from Doctor Who history who has recently celebrated or are soon to celebrate their birthday. Unless they're a Jehovah's Witness. (laughs) 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 The the contestants have to try to guess the actor's age and score as few points as possible. If they guess the actor's age correctly and get an exact answer, no points are added to their score. If they're one year away, either over or under, it's one point. If they're two away, they get two points. And so on. At the end of the four rounds, the points are added up and the winner is the contestant with the lowest score. (laughs) To ensure fair play, the contestants will take it in turns to start each round, just so no one guesses one year away from another contestant's answers for all five rounds and tries to spoil the fun. Also, (laughs) new rules... No contestant is allowed to give the same answer twice. It's all right, Kirby's not here. And if anyone (laughs) mutters, I don't know, or similar, 10 points will be added to that contestant's total. These are called the Kirby Bartlett Sloan rules. Mm. The weekly scores and winners' bonuses are added up across the series, and a winner will be crowned at some point. But before we play How Aged Are They, we'd better meet this week's contestants. First up is Adam. Adam, 62, used to be in charge of the colouring sand at the Black Gang Chine Resort, individually colouring in every single grain of sand to ensure consistent colourisation. Unfortunately, his felt-tip pens run out, so he had to leave. He now works in the local shop on the Isle of Wight and is a very popular member of the team, but only because he's the only one who knows how to work the self-service checkouts. (laughs) Oh, no, we have to just fast forward it now because obviously I've got everyone else's which I'm not going to do now because right. they take long to write and then I can redo them next week yes. so hold on just, I've just got to get out to Mary's it will be worth it I promise Okay. Uh, uh, just stop revert. I've got an auto queue thing on my computer it's oh, my mm. uh, four rounds four rounds mm. uh, Marley Sloan Kirby this is slick. do you want me to play some lift music while you work through this bit or? No, it's all right. I'll tell you what. I'll go back to the old um, way of uh, doing it via the screen over here. Okay, in three, two. Mary, 28, was one of America's foremost bakers, winning the Great American Cook-Off for 16 seasons in a row. She was once responsible for up to 8% of the croissants eaten every day in America, but had to give up the baking to focus on her new career as Gene Simmons in the fourth best Kiss tribute band in the States. <laughs> Keep on rocking, Mary. I thought you meant the other Gene Simmons, the one um, and the actress of um, the mid-50s and 60s fame. Um, I'm not sure which one that is. Which one's that? Gene with a J, Simmons. Rather, Gene with a G. All right. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Scores so far. Adam's got 28.3 as an average, played 385 points. And Mary has 39.5 as an average with one win, played two, 79 points. But today's actors and actresses on How Aged Are They? Shall we start with round one? Everybody, let's have round one. Oh, sorry, you're doing the quiz. Okay, right, yes. I'm ready now. (laughs) First one up today is Carol McIntosh. That's Carol McIntosh. Uh, she played Alea and Restack in The Hungry Earth and Cold Blood, and also Madame Bastra in A Good Man Goes to War. Carol McIntosh was born on the 9th of April. On, that was her McIntosh. birthday. McIntosh. Ne- well, is it McIntosh, McIntosh or McIntosh? McIntosh? It could be McIntosh. 
Oh, I thought it was Neve McIntosh. Anyway, carry on. Yes, um, how old is anyway, she? Yes. Oh, yes, born the... on the 9th of April. How old is Carol McIntosh <laughs> McIntosh 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 How old is Carol Tosh? McIntosh. Adam. Oh, 36. And Mary. Uh, 44. That's round one. <laughs> Round two. I should get. A little, I'll tell you what I've got actually. Hold on. The, oh, I haven't got it on here. I'll do it for next week. I'll have it better next week. It'll, it'll be like like practice. Uh, round two. Alicia Bailey. Alicia Bailey. Now Alicia played Isabella. Adam, do you see what I'm saying? It's ironic, about? isn't it? Alicia Bailey played Isabella. Adam, do you see what I've done, Adam? Yeah. Ad- Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did see. Mary, did you see? Because I wasn't sure if it was obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia Bailey played Isabella in the 2010 Doctor Who story, The Vampires of Venice. Alicia Bailey was born on the 13th of April, but how aged are they? Mary? Uh, 52. Adam? Uh, 29. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make a little note here. We need some ooh sound effects. <laughs> Ooh. That's it, Mary. That's it. So you, you can do it for each other. Uh, number three, Rico Ross. I'll tell you what, should I put the theme tune back on? No. Oh, okay. Um, so Rico Ross appeared as the ringmaster in the greatest show in the galaxy. That was an episode of uh, Doctor Who. He was born on the 16th of April. But how aged is Rico Ross, the ringmaster? from the greatest show in the galaxy. Adam? 67. And Mary? Hmm, 72. 72. And finally, Bill Churchit. Bill Churchit. Bill played... Sorry, Stephen Churchit, who played (laughs) Bill in Attack of the Cyberman uh, Men, alongside friend of the show to everyone but me, Colin Baker. That deserves. I need a new. Okay. What, who, hang on. Who, he was in what? Sorry. Uh, he was in Attack of the Cybermen. Attack of the Cybermen. Right. Attack of the Cybermen. He played Bill. It's Stephen Churchit. And now, unfortunately, and with sympathies to his friends and family, uh, unfortunately, Stephen passed away earlier this year. But oh. how old would he have been if he hadn't? <laughs> how aged would he have been? Now oh, I've got to change the name of the program, <laughs> name of the quiz for that, haven't I? <laughs> How aged would they have been then? Yes. <laughs> Mary? Um, 82. Oh, I was going to say that. Um, Remember the 89. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, that's the end of part one of How Aged Are They? Uh, you'll now go back to the 20 Megabyte Doctor Who podcast while the scores are worked out. But for now... Thank you very much for listening. This has been How Aged Are They? Oh, hold on, we need some clapping. Hold on. No, not clapping. I don't even laugh. No, don't. No, hold on. Let's try that one. Oh, hold on. Uh, how aged? Oh, that's not going to work because it's going to be. How aged are they? Back after this quick break. Jeez. And right, we'll clear. Doctor Who news. Uh, so, uh, Doctor Who magazine five six seven. That's so got got a number two in it. Five six seven uh, is out, and you can buy this from uh, whoone.co.uk uh, if you want to buy it over the um, sort of mailing systems of which you may or may not have. It features a cover with the thirteenth Doctor and the Legend of the to- uh, Sea Devils stuff on it, uh, with some um, supplements and things like that, and uh, a picture also of a new style sea devil um and loads of other stuff so that's in the doctor who magazine 567 there's also some photographs uh, been or images uh, from legend of the sea devils uh, which is on easter sunday so we can watch that without fear of having to do a podcast straight afterwards um I'm sure there's oh yeah i will be allowed to watch it because essentially we're still together as a family while watching it um, this will be the second to last appearance of the 13th Doctor. Um, it will also feature Mandip Gill and uh, John Wonderful Bishop. Hey. Right, we have hey. a trailer. Hey, which... I won't be sorry to see them go. Indeed. We have a trailer 
featuring well, which sounds like this. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, sea Devil. Coming straight for us. That's impossible. Madame Chin! Pirate Queen! Where's the crew? That'll be us. We don't stand a chance. Yes! Did you just stand up like this? You're like a kid sometimes. Thanks! Say hello to my crew. The world has been disrupted. Because of you. Because of what you unleashed. You want to create chaos. It is our time. Man the cannons. The ship is going down. Down! Doctor Who, Legend of the Sea Devils, it says in text form. Now, those of you who are watching... Oh, those who are watching the live feed will now get the first ever glimpse on the 20 megabyte Doctor Who podcast of our new dog, Odie, who is oh, wow. delicious. Oh, he's new absolutely doggy gorgeous. Got new doggy wuggy. He's beautiful. Uh, doggy, doggy, oddy, 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 oi, oi, oi is a, a little phrase where you often... Why the name Odie? Why did you Odie, that? Uh, Odie, like Odie, Odie out of Garfield. No, the, the dog. Oh, okay, yeah. We didn't name him. His previous owners named him, but it's his name, so uh, we unfair to change it. Um, yeah, he's adorable. You right could then, do the it next subtly. bit of news. Eh? You could do it subtly. <laughs> well, Bodie or Clo- Glody or something. Well, yeah, like, you know, like on one of those word games where you've got to get from one <laughs> word to another. Hello, <laughs> Goldie. Could... No, like his name, week, he suits you could like change his name slightly until he gets what you want to call it, <laughs> and, 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 and it suits. And sorry, he, he loves Isabella too. Right, Gary Russell wins the Terence Dix Award for Writers. Gary Russell has become the inaugural recipient of the Terence Dix Award for Writers, presented by Doctor Who Appreciation Society. Congratulations, Gary! And the saddest yeah. news of the week, of course, is that legendary actress and best friend of Lady Gaga. June Brown has died at the age of 95. Um, oh, yeah. Obviously more legendary sad. known, obviously, as Dot Cotton, but she was in Doctor Who in the Time Warrior playing, playing Lady Eleanor. Uh, icon, a TV icon in this country. And Mary, of course, you're a fan of EastEnders. You'll know of Dot Cotton and and um, June Brown. Of course. Of course. She's a legend. She yeah. She's a legend. And like I say, I, I, do, I did like the fact that they replayed her appearance on the Graham Norton show with uh, Lady Gaga, who was quite taken by her, and it was a, it was a thrill and uh, a charming to watch as well. So that's sad news, but... She was a crazy lady. I she, mean, whenever... Oh, she was. She was. Not in her character, whenever she was on a show, like Graham Norton, I mean, whoa, yeah. she was... She was amazing. Yeah, she was <laughs> certainly lit up a room, and there was a... Quite, you know, quite literally the party. lit up a room. Yeah. Very entertaining. Yeah. She was told, I, I read, I don't know how true it is, and obviously if it's not, then I've been fooled by some tabloid paper pap, mm-hmm. but I read that she was told that she had to carry on smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt yeah. that was the case. I'm not sure who told her, maybe it was a tobacconist. <laughs> I'm gonna, there's a little bit of blurb about, which I'm going to read, because there's not that much to read. It says, June Brown appeared in the 1973 story, The Time War of warrior playing lady eleanor she was most famous for creating the role of dot cotton in the bbc soap opera eastenders playing the role between 1985 and 2020 june brown was born in suffolk in 1927 she trained at the old vic theatre school in london she was a familiar face on british tv throughout the 60s 70s and 70s appearing in shows like dixon of dot green itv television playhouse coronation street z cars general hospital the prince and the pauper and duchess of duke street she joined the cast of EastEnders in 1985 and recommended to the producers by fellow star Leslie Grantham, another Doctor Who um, person as well. She played Dot Cotton, mother of nasty Nick Cotton, who I've met and is quite charming. Um, that's John Altman. Um, in, until 1993. And I tell you what, because um, we were, I was in a pub with, uh, with John Altman after the, the, the con finished and I overheard him having a conversation about June Brown and how much he loved her and how much like a real mum he was to him so uh, it must be gutting for him as well but anyway uh, I'll continue Uh, returning to the series in 1997 in 2008 she became the first soap 
actor to carry an episode single-handed, a performance which led to a nomination for a BAFTA award. She was appointed member of the Order of the British Empire in the 2008 Birthday Honours and an officer of the Order of the British Empire in the 2022 New Year's Honours for services to drama and charity. June Brown was married twice. She survived by six children from her marriage to her second husband, Robert Arnold, who died in 2003. So there we go. June Brown, legend. Oh, hold on. No, 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 hold on. We can do a lot better than that. Oh. Let's, let's, uh, let's give uh, junebrown.com. Yes, absolutely. And well-deserved, too. Absolutely. Quite yeah. seriously. She was, she was an absolute soup legend and uh i don't think so far i don't i think she just left eastenders i think i don't yeah. think they killed her off but i think obviously now they need to kill her off off screen and do it very dignified yeah and that'd be a good idea her, i like she, that ben I like bring that. her back give her a really nice you know end yeah. to dot cotton i think that's what it is absolutely else. and bear in mind she was not she was 95 when she passed away um william roach who plays ken barlow in coronation street is 90 and still going strong it's amazing uh, yeah. So what are you saying? Are you saying he's got five years left? I hope he's got longer, but it is a remarkable feat to play that one character. I'm not talking about William Roach for that length of time. Incredible. I read that she stepped away from the show because she was dissatisfied. Yeah. With yeah. Grumpy storylines, I would imagine, Mary. Yeah. Probably. But, <laughs> but to be fair, Mary, do, do you are you bang up to date with it? I don't know how you get it anymore. Are yeah. You, or, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So, so you're not like 15 years behind like we were no. with like <laughs> neighbours or something. Back. No, no longer. Yeah. All right. Because do you still think it's any cop? Because it's I can't even watch it anymore because the stories are just so bad and the acting was not great either. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really boring. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really I don't haven't watched it for how years. they haven't killed it off. I'd have thought by now, you know, it's it's had its time. No one watches soap operas anymore. Yeah. It doesn't work live. It doesn't work on the iPlayer. It's I, just not very good. I only watch Coronation it. Street when Toby's in it. Um. I've, I've never, I've only, <laughs> I think I've seen three episodes, <clears throat> excuse me, of Coronation Street in my life, and that's when there was the tram crash. It's funny. <laughs> it, it goes so that EastEnders gets interesting at the same time that Coronation Street kind of has very boring storylines. Mm. And so then I get behind on the one that's boring. And then when EastEnders gets boring, then I turn to Coronation Street where things get interesting again. So I don't have a, you know, they have a rhythm about them. And if they both get really, really boring, then obviously you turn over to Hollyoaks. (laughs) Right then. And now they have uh, what Holby City is now off the air. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's a shame, isn't it? Um, but uh, we have an actor appearing at FantasyCon who is in um, Hobby City and Sarah Jane Avengers. I'll talk about him later. Um, haven't announced him properly yet, but of course on this show you get heads ups. Right, so uh, we've got Alan T. Butcher saying, of course, we later discovered that the 10th Doctor was originally the 11th Doctor, so after this regeneration he was strictly speaking the 12th Doctor, which is why Matt Smith's 11th Doctor, in fact, was the 13th Doctor and expected to die. Uh, is that noise? What number doctor anybody is anymore? It's all because of David Tennant. It's all his fault, I tell you. See, that's what Alan T. Butcher says. That's how he reads it. And Ben, uh, you know what you said, uh, Carol McIntosh, uh, for that, that birthday in the quiz. Um, he also says, at what age did Carol McIntosh change her name to Neve, as she's better known? Yes, Neve Don't McIntosh. know, but uh, that's also, the name that is uh, appears on the uh, on the official Doctor Who website that I glean these details from. Thank you, so Ben. So if they've got it wrong, it's... Um, I mean, they do say check all your facts twice, but like I can be asked to do that. <laughs> split together anyway once. And to re- uh, before we return back to the results of the quiz, uh, FantasyCon news. FantasyCon is on the 5th of November at Cow's Yacht Haven. You can buy your tickets at fantasycon.net. Uh, I doubt any of you are going to actually take me up on that because obviously most people that listen to the show are far too far away. But Billy Kirk Bright came to it. So we have. And if White Billy's v- going to turn up, it'd be nice if he did. Up. White VR, who, who are going to provide a, re- a virtual reality experience to people who show up. Um, silver screen um, autographs. We'll be selling some amazing uh, framed autographs and signed photos. We have um, retro gaming, which will be provided by my company, ABV Services, uh, if uh, my mate Mick um, fails to come up trumps with the kit. Uh, that will be there, whatever happens. Minifigure. Montage. These haven't been officially announced yet, but they will be there with their incredible. They create these little Lego scenes with with iconic um, characters, uh, uh, which are actually Lego um, um, things, uh, 
you know, people. Um, and they are, will also be sponsoring the Lego Zone, which is appearing. Clive Mantle, as said previously, lovely man. Uh, will be coming along, and he did. Did I play the video um, sound effect from last week? When uh, shall I play it now? Oh, yes. Hello, my Lovely. glorious wife and I interrupt this program to tell you that we are thrilled to attend the Fan TC Con 2022 in association with the Wessex Cancer Trust on Saturday, the 5th of November at Cow's Yacht Haven on the glorious Isle of Wight. Uh, I'm Clive Mantle, and this is my glorious <laughs> wife, Carla Mendonca, and we will see you there. Hopefully, fingers crossed. All right, lots of love. See Hi. you there. Bye. There we go. So, <coughs> Clive Mandel and Carla Mendonca, his wife. Uh, Carla, of course, known as the mum in uh, My Parents Are Alien. She's also in Coronation Street playing some head teacher at the moment. I can't remember what the character's name is because I don't watch Coronation Street. We have the Lego Zone, as I said previously. Kai Owen, who played Reese uh, but wasn't in uh, Stolen Earth and Journey's End, sadly. He was mentioned, but he wasn't in it. That's uh, um, Gwen's husband. Heroes, our, our old sponsors from a couple of years ago, uh, will be there, and they obviously support the event uh, quite uh, strongly. Fidel's Dream, who do 3D printing. I'm intrigued to see what this 3D printing is. And, Ben, you can't get a 3D print of a certain inappropriate object. Just saying. Well, you can, but you're not going to have that at that event. Um, Craig uh, Fairbrass. Craig Fairbrass, a film star of British Tough Nut Films, uh, will be there. I'm looking forward Wasn't to meeting him. Wasn't he in Fred? <laughs> And oh, that, that is it for the timing. Apart from, apart from, and I'm going to, uh, hang on, where's what I've got a message from somebody which will help me out with this particular link before we move back to the results. And it is, hang on, I've got what I'm going to mention now. Oh, wrong, wrong person. Oh, blast. Oh, this is, this is slick. Now we're back to our normal uh, standard of podcasting. Oh. I didn't realise you'd moved away from it. <laughs> <laughs> this is? Uh, at which oh, point? Dear today was this or oh well no it was maybe it was through him hang on I'm, just, I'm going back a bit going back a bit because yeah, uh, that's where I said yes yes straight away oh oh now the dog's coughing oh blast anybody know the name of the actor that played uh, Maria's dad in Sarah Jane Adventures oh Joseph that's it Joseph um oh, gl- oh blast I should have done my research Milson, there you are, jo- Joseph Milson. No, not the name of the, the last dog in Friday Night Dinner. It's uh, Joseph Milson, who uh, will apparently be in Moon Knight. That's a good series, isn't it? Um, but he was in uh, Last Kingdom, Sarah Jane Adventures, um, Bond, Banished, and loads of other stuff. So he, he's coming along uh, as well. And I'm currently uh, trying to negotiate another person I can't mention yet because it's not been confirmed, but I'm very excited about who it may or may not be. So that's well, I told fantasy. you, you've got to leave all the negotiations with my agent. I can't talk about it yeah, on air. Okay. But that's it. That's us current fancy con news. And I will say that today we went to Heroes Con. Um, they did a little convention in Newport. Um, and it was absolutely fab. Everybody was in cosplay. Roy was there with his TARDIS and he was dressed up as a brigadier. And um, lovely bunch of people, um, you know, creating this event. And uh, it will be, uh, it's a locker. We know we can do a really con- good convention on the Isle of Wight now. So it's, it's given me a bit of a, a, a boot up. And most of the people that were at Heroes Con will also be at Fantasy Con. So it's, it's really, really exciting. And that's it. And now we can move back to Ben and the rest of the quiz. Uh, just before we go back to the quiz, um, in answer to um, Alan T. Butcher, uh, she was born Carol McIntosh or Macintosh or <laughs> uh, and now she uses the name Neve as her acting name so that's when she changed her name ha <laughs> hey, welcome back to this <laughs> <laughs> oh dear oh dear uh, <laughs> imposed and welcome back to the second half of whoa, How Aged Are They? In the first half, we gave you the four actors and their birthdays are contestants guessed as to how old they are. We've given them a point for every year they were above or below the actual person's age. And let's have a look to see how they scored. The first person was Carol slash Neve Macintosh. 
Uh, Adam guest at 36. Mary guest at 44. Carol slash Neve McIntosh, McIntosh was born in 1972, making her 50 years old. 50 years old. Clap the age. Clap the age. Uh, which means that Adam scored 14 points and Mary scored six. <laughs> Round two was Alicia Bailey. Alicia played Isabella. Alicia and Isabella, Adam. Yeah. Uh, in the tw- uh, in the 2010 story, <laughs> that was the Vampires of Venice. Uh, Alicia Bailey was born on the 13th of April, but how aged are they? Adam claimed she was 29. Mary said 52. Alicia Bailey's actually 34. So Adam got five points and Mary got 18. Round well, three hey, was back in the game. Rico, Rico Das, who played the ringmaster in The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, born on the 16th of April. But how aged are they? Adam said 67. Mary said 72. Rico Ross is actually... 61. So Adam got six points and Mary got 11. Finally, round four was Stephen Churchit, who played Bill in the Attack of the Cybermen alongside friend of the show to everyone else but me, Colin Baker. He was born on the 10th of April and he unfortunately died earlier on this year. Sincere condolences to his family and everyone affected. <laughs> That's so in- insincere when you said sincere. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, he was born on the 10th of April unfortunately he died early this year but how old would he have been on his birthday which would have been today so we celebrate his life uh, Adam said he was 89 and Mary said he was 82 uh-uh, both way over he would only have been 75 which means Adam got 14 points Mary got 7 points adding up those final scores this is where we need another ooh that's ooh. a new time oh, three that was a burp adam i've got plenty of burps. i tried to say oh, ooh, but a burp came out oh okay sorry about um that. so let's pretend this is an ooh <laughs> the scores after the first, last four rounds are as follows and it's so close this week you couldn't fit a cigarette paper between the two of them unless it was a <laughs> quite a big cigarette paper <laughs> Mary, you scored forty-two points. <laughs> what does that mean? It's, it's meant to be an ooh. Oh, I haven't got ooh. an ooh yet. I'll have to get an ooh. That's better. Yeah. Mary, you scored forty-two points. Adam, you oh, scored yes. thirty-nine points. Do I win? Ooh. You're the winner. OK, so um, we'll add those scores on to the previous scores, which I have got, but I can't be bothered to do now because I was listening to something Adam was saying and then we got all talking about dot com. So, uh, you know, uh, so at the moment now everyone's got a win apart from Kirby, which isn't much of a surprise. And we'll do it again next time we do a podcast. Up until then, thank you very much for listening. This has been the wonderful How Aged Are They? <laughs> Right. Uh, Alan T. Butcher says, Last week I was closely studying the Doctor's granddaughter, space pilot so Steve Taylor, and the legendary Joe Grant, amongst others, at Capital 5 in yep. Crawley. And then he yep. says, I know that, Ben, that's yep. why I said that. I know that, I know. Ben, that's why that's, I said that. That's what he said. That's where I, that's yes. where I bumped into you know, him. Odie wants uh, to get out, but I'm not letting him out in case he decides he wants to pee in the kitchen. So he's, stay here for a bit, Odie. Thank no, you very much. Don't, 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 don't let him out. He's going to do that. No, it, it won't be long before I can actually properly let him out into the back garden. Well, yeah, because you don't want him going wee-wee. I can let you into the very, room, very, you? Thank you. I can let you into a very, a very interesting bit of information you probably didn't know before. Is that... Um, he's done a wee-wee before? No, uh, they, uh, has, he, has he done a wee wee before in the house? No, he hasn't. I don't want him to do any. So he's going outside. <laughs> should we, should we get him to do wee wees in the house? <laughs> Anyway, right. Um, so I can let you into a, a bit of information you're probably unaware of. Is that um, Russell T. Davis originally had the title "The Stolen Earth" as a potential Christmas special title. Then he realised that perhaps uh, um, some people around the world wouldn't be able to associate "stolen" with um, Christmas. Anyway, next time, which will be in two that weeks' makes time. makes about as much sense as a Stephen Moffat story. Stolen. It's a little thing you can eat at Christmas. 
Stolen. Stalin, it's I know, I'm just having a play on words, that's how comedy works. Uh, okay, okay. For sake. Oh. It's like having uh, Kirby on the show. Oh no, Kirby would have laughed. Wait, was that a joke? <laughs> oh, Obviously went over our heads. <laughs> Look, just for the record. <laughs> thank you very much. Right, so next time it's the is journey's end. We can't do it next week because uh, the powers that be in this house have dictated that it's Easter Sunday and I must watch Doctor Who and spend time with the family because I have to go to work on the Monday, which is unusual because I don't normally work Mondays, but because we're shut on Sunday, I have to work Monday. Therefore, I can't do the show. But the following week, we're back with uh, Journey's End uh, and the beginning of the end of the David Tennant era. Mm-hmm. So, until oh, then... Sure, well, no, I mean, well, surely... Surely the one last week was the beginning of the end. I mean, maybe this week's could have been the beginning of the beginning of the end, but next week's has got to be the end of the beginning of the end. And then after that, when we get onto the specials, we've got the beginning of the beginning of the beginning of the end before we get onto the beginning the of the end yeah. of the end. Yeah, so, you know, I think we're a long way off the beginning of the end yet. Well stated. Thank you very much. I, I wrote it all down earlier. <laughs> <sighs> Knowing Adam would say that. Uh... You know, I'm starting to get the <coughs> desire to go out and get an illicit Chinese takeaway. Master, master. <laughs> anyway, you said the specials. It was like he was here. Oh, it's, that's too quiet to start. Let's try this one. <laughs> so, anyway, until next time, thank you for listening, watching. Oh, taking... hold on. What? What? You did you did a joke. <laughs> oh, I'm only just beginning, mate. <laughs> this is going to be so. Glad I'm for bloody finishing. This is Peter Davison, and you're listening to the 20 megabyte Doctor Who podcast. All right, what we watched this week? Okay, right. Uh, where we are? It's uh, we've got 20 minutes to go. Hopefully, less than that. So, what I watched this week uh, was. Sonic the Hedgehog 1, because I'm, I'm considering going to the cinema to watch Sonic the Hedgehog 2, uh, because I've heard it's quite good. So Sonic the Hedgehog 1 was OK. quite enjoyed it. Jim Carrey's brilliant. Um, but I, th- I think, you know, it's, it's quite good fun to watch. It's a good family film. So I would recommend it if you feel that way inclined. We, I, we me and Deb, also watched a film called The Power of the Dog with... Kennedy Bunga Bumba Bumba Bat, which is never was, it, was it very good? Because I was I, w- I was wondering whether very I should arty, watch it. Uh, and uh, the acting and of uh, cinematography is superb. It oh, is yeah. a good story. Um, so yes, I would say it is worthy of an Oscar. Oh, it won one, didn't it? Um, and also, my cousin uh, Benedict is is in the film. I've got a funny feeling uh, I forgot to mention my cousin Jim, uh, who was also. I'm just going to check that one. I've got so many cousins, it's uh, ah. ridiculous, really. Uh, <laughs> Jim. Rory, sorry, just to interrupt your news, what? Rory McElroy's jumped up to third. So yeah, I've no, put money got, on the top three. He got an eagle, but unfortunately, <laughs> your, your mate Smith, who was only two shots behind Scheffler, is now, he did a bogey and it dropped back to three. I could um, do with Rory McElroy winning. He's, that, got, he's just lovely. another bogey. He's now dropped back to minus he's six. So six. He's falling it? away. Yeah. I mean, sorry, sorry, Adam. I just yes, need no, to I'm, that I'm, Jim to Carrey say. is not my cousin, as I know. So, but anyway, where did I get up to? Sorry, Mary. I was talking about films, wasn't I? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I highly recommend Power of the Dog, which is a, a Netflix movie. You should be able to watch it on there. Um, I tell you what, some amazing performances. And it is, uh, and it's a good story. You know, it, it's not predictable. It's a really good story. Uh, Moon Knight, which is a new series on uh, Disney Plus via those geniuses at Marvel. Absolutely superb series. Uh, Two episodes have been out so far uh, and were hooked already. Really, really done good. It's a mixture of violence, comedy, uh, fairly good British accent by an American actor. Uh, But it's a trouble with American actors. Apart from, um, what's her name, Um, Gwyneth Paltrow and that other bird, what was her name? The one that was in all the Bridget Jones films. Uh, everybody else, and of course Andrew Garfield, who's British American anyway. They're not very good at doing British accents. Um, I know, Moon, but the Brits seem to nail American accents all of, so not, well. not all of them. David Tennant well. had a problem, didn't he, if I was to remember right now. Um, and um, Download, which is a series on Prime. Uh, we've watched series one a couple of years ago, and they have brought out series two. It's only, they're only half-hour episodes, and it's a really is good sort of. Is it upload? 
Oh, it's upload. Why did I write download? Well I done, don't... Mary. Point for you. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, because um, that's what's probably going to happen in the next series. Yeah, upload. Sorry. Re- re- rewind, rewind, upload. Prime, great series. Um, concept, everything. It's such a good series. And if you haven't watched series one, watch it, because you now you've got a bumper amount of episodes to watch. Uh, so that's it for this week. Uh, oh, and the golf. Uh, I've been watching the golf as well, which has been absolutely amazing. Uh, and some uh, football matches uh, uh, as well. But that's really not what we're supposed to be talking about at this particular stage. Ben, what have you been watching this week? Well, you, did you not uh, did you not watch Match of the Day last night? Let um, me qualify that statement. No, do you know what I watched instead? Ben, I'll tell you what I wa- hold on. Ben. Let, let me qualify my statement because uh, yesterday Southampton got a rather big kick in from Chelsea yes. and Manchester United got. That's because Southampton hasn't Everton. got the best manager in the Premier League. Um, oh, Man United have. <laughs> yeah, well, no. well, yeah, well, certainly. Oh, yeah, if mate, you want to swap seriously. managers, I'm quite happy to do so. Uh, right, oh, absolutely, I'll swap with <laughs> Anyway, uh, what have I been watching? Hang well, on, hang um, on, hang on. I was going to say something. You put me right off my beaten track. Oh, on, I was going to say, you know, what did I watch match of the day? No, I'll tell you what I did watch. I watched um, on Channel 4, it's the match uh, revisited or something. It's a oh, brilliant yeah. thing, showing football matches from the 1980s and Southampton yeah. playing yeah. Liverpool at Anfield with Kevin yeah. Keegan in the team and Stephen Moran oh. scoring a last-minute winner. That was what oh. I enjoyed watching. Oh, I remember that match well. Yeah, carry on. I- I do. No, I do. I remember that match where I wasn't there, obviously, but I've seen the footage. And another <laughs> one just oh, I was. I'd have been about what, two. No, Keegan signed in '78, didn't he? Yeah, I would 70. have been. I would have been about fifteen. So that would have made it what? He, he signed in 1980, by the way, just to get your facts right. 1980 was. Oh, sorry, I was five at the time. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> What have I been watching? Well, I've watched a little bit of the Formula One. Got, uh, I've got over my little strop about it at the end of last season because uh, the way it finished was an absolute disgrace. And uh, I'm only now watching it because Max Verstappen keeps on losing. So that <laughs> makes me laugh. Uh, obviously, more inside the factories with the wonderful Greg Wallace who gets excited. No, I seen that. Yeah, I keep bit. meaning to watch it. Never do. Every big number. Of <laughs> Two million. <laughs> Love him. Um, I watched in the last fortnight, because it's been a fortnight, obviously, um, Studio 666, the Foo Fighters film. Oh, yes, it's on streaming now, isn't it? Yes. Oh, goodness me. Did you manage to watch it without um, having to grab a hanky? Well, I wasn't that excited. It was uh, a good film, but it had nothing like that. Oh, stop it. Uh, It was... I don't know how to describe it. It was incredible, I think. is The, only the trailers word. look great. We were really looking forward to watching it's it in the cinema. It's so worth watching. Dave Grohl is just the the megastar that everyone thinks he is. And obviously, it's very sad watching it now yeah. after uh, Taylor Hawkins died. Um, and then I watched loads of uh, Foo Fighters Festival gigs after that, all on YouTube, all very, very loud. Um, we've been watching... Crikey, it's the Irwins on Discovery in the uh, in the UK. Oh my goodness! Uh, now uh, the Irwins, Steve Irwin, was a um, a crocodile hunter from Australia. If uh, he's not aware, who died I don't know fifteen years ago, um, and got his family. Killed by a stingray. Yeah, he got killed by a stingray. It's so unfortunate that I mean, the, oh god, just don't even go there. Um, such a great bloke was Steve Irwin. It's just just a wonderful, wonderful man. And his family have carried on his uh, his work with all the animals and have started this massive zoo. And this TV show uh, now follows his son and his daughter, uh, Robert and Bindi. And Robert Irwin, he must be, I don't know, 16, 17, 18, something. Absolute legend. Just uh, the funniest thing about him is, though, he's very much like his dad. And he's you know obviously got a lot of mannerisms of his dad because, well, he's his dad's son. Yeah. Um, but the funniest thing about the show that we've realised is that whenever they do anything involving water, he is the only one who comes out wet. <laughs> Everyone else around him is dry, and he is just absolutely dry. They, they were doing a crocodile move the other day, and other people got a little bit wet, but he was just like he'd been rolling around in the mud. It was <laughs> So that's very funny. Um, so, yes, yeah, so Crikey, it's the Owens. Well worth watching. Um, golf, um, the Masters in Augusta, just love that. Just fantastic. Yeah, course absolutely Augusta. agree. Uh, just the best thing in the whole of sport so far this year to see Tiger Woods absolutely. play again after what happened. Yeah. He's an absolute hero, total legend, best person who's ever picked up a golf bat. And um, 
yeah, to see him back uh, 13 months after a, a crash that was very bad. Mm. It's just wonderful. I think he's finished bottom of the leaderboard because, I mean, I'm not being funny. I think he it's got a birdie first. on his last last hole. Oh, that would be good. I I've been doing a podcast, so I haven't been really be able to watch it. Um, but um, to see him back is just absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. Do and that's what I've been watching in the last fortnight. I just wanted to touch on something. I don't mean anything rude because Ooh, when you were talking sir. about it, it did remind me something I couldn't watch um, <clears throat> because it would have been too emotional for me. Uh, mm. And it was the memorial of Shane Warne. Uh, his children oh, talking God, about that, him. No, uh, don't do that. I that caught was... a little bit of it and I oh. just thought, oh, no, sorry. I can't, oh. I can't do it. Oh. I can't do that one. Um, that was uh, that was a really really t- it was lovely but it was a really tough watch it yeah. was oh wow yeah that was a sad couple of hours but what a brilliant man but why do I have to get Ed Sheeran to sing in I just don't know yeah they could have stopped at Elton John but no Did, was it because Ed Sheeran was claiming to be his mate. Yeah, yeah. No, they probably were. I think Ed Sheeran so. claims to be everybody's friend. I think it's, uh, if if this podcast hit three listeners, he'd probably say that he's one of my mates, to be fair. Right then, this is the moment everybody has been waiting for. Ben has compiled a special theme tune for this moment of merriness. She's been watching things and listening to things and also reading magazines. <laughs> but what she been listening to and watching and reading this week? Mary. <laughs> Is that a recording or did you, did, did you do that off the cuff? Oh, that was recorded. Did, you, did that sound recorded? Did that it sound does. Like... I did, but I thought there would be a what? musical backdrop what? to it. Well, so you're telling me that the brilliance of my uh, of the heart opening sequence that I made earlier with all the brilliant this one. And now. That with all the brilliant rhyming song in it, you're telling me that sounded like the muck I just made up off the top of my head because I couldn't actually think of anything to rhyme with. Blitz well, what I suggest you do, if that is off the <laughs> off the top of your head, write it down and put some music. Up, and no, you may rubbish, well have found Mary's uh, uh, um, jingle. No, I, I've actually made. I, I actually wrote something in my head for Mary the other day, and I just didn't write yeah, it down. Want, yeah, but we was, want something that's it's, nice and clean. It's, it's a uh, dignified oh, yeah, lady. It's, it's, it's Mary. It's respectable. Oh. Excuse me. If, if, <laughs> what you should notice, by the way, is that in all of the introductions for how aged are they, everyone else gets an absolute bashing apart from Mary, who I've got ultimate respect for due to her being yes, a lady. You, you only do that because Mary would come around with the knuckle dusters and give you a, a damn good thrashing. Absolutely. I mean, the other reason was just completely made up. It was the knuckle <laughs> dust I didn't want to mention. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Anyway, Mary, I think it's now <laughs> it's now time to hear what uh, what's been keeping you entertained media wise in the last fortnight. Well, um, actually, uh, not a lot. Oh. Um, <laughs> Big build, all of that build up. <laughs> very busy. I mean, uh, I mean the introduction is going to go longer than my uh, than my review here. Uh, mostly, I've been watching old stuff, um, stuff that I, I used to love or that I uh, have never watched and want to get into. I've been rewatching um, the Sopranos, which is something I watched back when they when it was coming out, but I never finished it. So now I'm rewatching it from the beginning again. Love the Sopranos. Um, and I uh, started watching Game of Thrones, which is oh, one of you, those... Oh, that is such a coincidence. I actually downloaded episode one to watch. I haven't watched it yet, but isn't that weird? We're both thinking about watching that. Wow. Well, because I started reading the books a long time ago before they even started the TV show. And the books kind of put me off because they were just so gratuitously violent and all that. And I understand from what people have told me that the first season is also pretty violent. But I should, you know, soldier through it because they get better and better as they go along. So that's what I'm into now is starting to watch Game of Thrones. And another old thing that I uh, picked up on, because it's new to BritBox, but I can tell that it's very old, is a comedy um, about the committee that put together the um, the 2012 um, London Olympics. All oh, right, yeah, I've heard about this. It's called 2012, isn't it? I've already seen it, you know, with Hugh Bonneville and... Yes. Uh, and uh, Olivia Coleman, and, and I mean, there's just so many 
um, iconic yeah, wonderful. actors in it, you know, that it's just fun to watch them all. And it is a good comedy. But one thing that took that struck me when it was over, because when, whenever the narrator come in, came in and would talk, I was like, gosh, I know that voice, but I, I don't know who that is. At the very end, the narrator is David Tennant. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I got a kick out of that because yeah. we're watching, you know, the uh, the the Tenth Doctor series. But, but was it his Tenth Doctor or Eleventh Doctor voice? You say you could have got confused. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. I think I think it was more the Eleventh Doctor. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, it was kind of fun to you know, and I love that. I love it like when I see actors and it's like I know that person. I, I and then but you don't can't find out till the credits, you know, who they really were. Um, or you look it up on your phone, the cast of, you know, whatever it is you're looking at. Um, and the one thing that's big finish related is that I've just downloaded and I'm going to start listening to is, is a new thing that they've put out called the Annihilators. Um, and it's a third doctor story. And just about everybody in it is a, like a, a, an actor who's putting on the voices because most of the actors from the third doctor era are either not cooperating to do it or not with us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or unable to cooperate to do it. Unable to join us, yeah. So, so that's what I'm going to be listening to, and I'll report on it the next time we meet. Why, thank God you. God knows when that will be. Me? Hey? God yeah, knows like, when that will be. Like months of time. Sure, yeah. It's only two weeks. Yeah, not like June. Not sort of exaggerating yeah. at all, are you? It's only two weeks, and it's not my fault. I didn't really decide Easter was going to be next weekend. It's like, like, like the shops are only closed in this country on Easter Day and Christmas Day. Mm. It's like you're under the same regulations as the shops because you work in one. Well, is that, yeah. is that uh, the no, way it works? No, it's family regulations rather than that. Um, I will say, though, that uh, obviously we, you we, not can, head we can't family? do it next week, but we'll do it the week after. But we can't do it the week after that, but we can do it the week after that. Uh, it's just this. It's just summer. I, I just get busier in the summer, I'm afraid. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So until next time, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to completely forget that I already said goodbye about uh, 20 minutes ago. Uh, thank you for listening, watching, taking part in the show. Goodbye. Bye bye. Goodbye, everybody. It's been a blast. <laughs> oh God! And Alan T. Butcher has just sent some last-minute feed uh, 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 feedback through the feed, and it's, uh, he says Mary should look out for WC1, which has Hugh Bonneville as the same character running yes. the BBC. Oh, I, have I have seen that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and it, it's a pretty similar character. Yeah. Riding the same kind of fold-up bike, yeah. Yes. Oh, that can I just something? Funny. Sorry, can I just say something slightly? I, I, I know politics is banned for off the show, but it made me sort of chuckle a little bit because uh, uh, apparently I'm, 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 I'm not an expert on it, but uh, there seems to be a bit of an indication that Vladimir Putin lies a bit to the Russians. Um, whether it is a lie or not, I can't speak. I've not been in the Ukraine. I haven't seen anything, but there's a rumor that he, he's fibbing a little bit to uh, the Russians about what's happening in the Ukraine. So, what happens this week? The UK's biggest liar, uh, Boris Johnson, um, goes over to the Ukraine and is, is given a tour of, of the scenery. Though, for me, that's not particularly good PA. Maybe get Greta What's-Her-Name to, to, to do that, rather than somebody who's a, a renowned liar uh, uh, as well. But obviously he doesn't lie as much as Putin apparently, allegedly does. I thought that was quite ironic. But that's all I'm going to say on the issue. Goodbye!
20 megabyte Doctor Who podcast is an APV services production sponsored by whoone.co.uk, lavazi.co.uk. We are a proud member of the Doctor Who podcast alliance. Doctor Who is a trademark of the BBC. No copyright infringement intended.